A good man is the Stevenson. I've heard this one. Be this one is a this one has a special place in my heart because he has the look at this goatee. Oh Gaw my god! Movie where he showed the world what it already knew all along. Are you for real? Not really. It's all fake. And as long as you don't give a shit, I really don't give a fuck. You can easily pump out a movie over a weekend. It starts off by not wasting any time. I love that he has a backwards cap or the do rag is so good. And get straight to the nonsense. Notice how he's getting ex like it, he's getting fatter and fatter over the years. So the the older you, <laughs> the further you go back in like Seagal's uh, library of content, and man, it's boy, is it vast. The, the older he gets, the fatter he gets, so the funnier the action sequences become. There's no darkness without light. Without light, all you have is darkness. I have both within me. No, he doesn't, but don't worry, because somehow it's all downhill from here. Yeah, it's impressive. He proves it by not even finishing the opening credits. You're about 20 miles off from target before taking off to lunch. Is there any good restaurants around here? It's a Seagal movie, and he doesn't do second takes, so they were forced to just go with it. Yeah, that's a negative on the restaurant go. Seagal immediately had that man killed. He's the leader of an elite group of something they never bother telling us. What the f*** is that? And his target is an Islamic fundamentalist, a Chai Com arms dealer who finances terrorist activities. And lives in Romania. In order to take out such a versatile villain, he puts together an elite team of the biggest action stars who will agree to work with him. Well, we gotta go. So the pretendables plan to infiltrate the enemy's <laughs> base using stealth and only take out the guards if completely necessary. But something about this unconscious and defenseless guard really pisses Seagal off, so f the plan. Now that what? Seagal's got a taste of human blood, his partner knows things are gonna get f***ing weird, so he gets the hell out of there. The first thing Seagal does is his trademark sword slap with the sword he magically has now before stuffing it down his shirt for reasons I don't want to know. Then he peeks through the window and sees a bunch of women and children. Jackpot. He blows the door open and rains down hellfire on any poor son of a bitch that happens to be in there. Even though the target leaves. The most realistic American special op. Seagal doesn't give a shit cause he's in the fucking zone. He orders a drone strike to eliminate any witnesses. But he's already done a lot of walking today, so instead of getting out of the blast radius, he tells this little girl he gets that her dad's dead, but we all got problems, now get over here, and uses her as a human shield. <laughs> then, after she takes the brunt of the explosion, This is where mama at. Just kidding, mama and dead. Pile drives her of the explosion. He does the biggest dick move and pile drives her into <laughs> the <fucking> ground. <laughs> no, no, he fucking slammed her. It's called the uh, this move is called the Alabama slammer. You really thought you really thought you were gonna be saved, huh? Where mama at? Mama dead, and now you dead too. <laughs> You really think I'd let a, a, a young terrorist get away? <laughs> Biggest dick move and pile drives her into the <laughs> ground. Now, it's two years later and Seagal still has recurring dreams where he's Humpty Dumpty being put back together before waking up in a cold sweat. Some things never change. His neighbor needs him to break into her apartment. Are you locked out? Which is so crazy because he was planning on doing that anyways. He brings his service dog to try and fool them into thinking he's a real person, but his cover is blown when he couldn't even think up a f***ing name. What's his name? I just never named him. Later, Seagal <laughs> goes to scope out the local kindergarten, but- Whoa, whoa, whoa.
the best part about this movie and just like all Steven Seagal movies is that he wrote this shit himself, dog. Like he literally was just like, what do humans do? And you know, in the real world, he has a dog and he has named those dogs. So I guess while he's writing the script for his movies, he like forgets things that humans do in the real world. You know what I mean? This is, this is a dog. I forgot to name it. I don't even know what the name of this dog is. But I've had this dog for 25 years. <laughs> My dog's name is Dog. His mind palace is a vacuum. It's just like, how do you forget the top of the hour ad break, for example? Like when you're writing a screenplay, right? Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. Everybody knows it. You know it. I know it, right? Like we're always thinking about it. Except none of you actually thought about it and I debated all of you, right? But fear not, like, you can avoid the top of the hour ad break by subscribing for $5 or for free. Where mama at? Now, if you no longer want to see them, you can subscribe for $5 or free or with a Twitch Prime or by getting gifted sub. Here's the term ad break. Now, uh, what's the name? <laughs> Yo, mama dead. What's the name of the top of the hour? I break. I don't know. I never named it. <laughs> oh, Aisha Esquire. Thank you for the five. Get the subs. Line five people. No longer see the ads at the top of the hour. But the little girl happens to be there. And as soon as he's recognized. Hey, where's your dog? He turns around and gets the f out. This he's is her brother evading. who's already heard all about their creepy neighbor. That's the man I've been telling you about. Sagal makes a beeline to this church to establish an alibi and has finally mastered the art of blending in by telling the priest that he's just browsing Just looking around. Like it's a fucking furniture store. Then, because he's so into adults, his next stop is a strip club where he ignores all the strippers and randomly assaults the customers. <laughs> When Seagal returns home, what? he runs into these guys who want to know why he killed their friend in the strip club. <laughs> so he apologizes and tells them things just got out of hand and just kidding. He pulls a sword out of his ass again and murders the f out of them too. Then he drops <laughs> incense what? that he carries around at all times just to be a prick and annoy the police. Then he makes his escape by teleport waddling away. Now the police show up and do exactly what they're trained to do. Again with the incense. Talk about how awesome Seagal is. The killer obviously is very skilled with a knife. And how anyone who gets in his way is fucked. A warning. But the question is, a warning to whom? The local Russian mafia boss has a meeting with the local Chinese mafia boss. And wouldn't you know it, it's the Chinese. Okay, none of this, and I mean none of this, have anything to do with anything else that has happened on the plot so far. Like, it's just like a mishmash of different movies. I don't understand. Like, what What about Afghanistan? Like, was there... Does that somehow have something to do with, like... Like, please tell me there's something related back to, like, Afghanistan when he was doing, like, missions and shit over there. Like, maybe he just... Like, maybe the girl he piled drove into the fucking ground becomes a terrorist or something? He's communist Islamic terrorist arms dealer that Seagal rescued earlier. It turns out he and Seagal have a lot in common. Proclivity for beautiful Russian girls. The younger, the better. The Russian boss is there to find out who killed his men, and now he's pretty sure it was the brother. Yeah, how'd you know? It's a Seagal movie. Oh, shit. So the fact that he was with you when they were fucking killed somehow never comes up. So he sends the Come on. That okay, that's too much. That's literally what? Like he saw 
He saw who murdered the fuck. He saw him murder him. They were fucking killed. Somehow never comes up. So he sends the world's worst hitman who misses from right fucking here. He can't believe that dumb shit either, but you need to get over it because we're only halfway through this atrocity. The sister gets home from work and starts to panic when it looks like cigar- <laughs> Motherfuckers like me playing Valo, dude. That's crazy. All finally broke in. She's <laughs> overcome with relief though when it turns out to just be the Russians who are there to traffic her and her little sister. Keep her safe. So Seagal goes to tell them he already called dibs, and when they don't <laughs> back down, go back to your room. Waddles back into his apartment and sends his body double out to show them he means business. <laughs> but they escape. I think the funniest part about Steven Seagal's stunt man is that he's also not very much in shape, or at least they like stuffed his entire fucking. Uh, they stuffed his suit full of shit to make him look like Steven Seagal. So even the stunt double's movement is like kind of restricted. Look. And sends his body double out to show them he means. Also, his body double straight up has a different, different facial hair. Steven Seagal. Pulls back into his. Like no, no beard, just a goatee. Apartment and sends his body double out. Body double has like full beard. To show like, look, look, look. Like a five o'clock shadow. To show them he means business. <laughs> but they escape with the little girl who they offer to the Chinese boss as a gift. This is the sister. He tells them they're really f It's always really funny because they're like, you know, <laughs> in shitty movies like this, they're like, we have to traffic this child. Like, specifically this child. Ooh, this child is a delicacy. It's like, why that child? You could have found any other child if you were, like, that obsessed with, like, trafficking children. But they're like, no, this is the, this is the one child that is, like, the best one to traffic. <laughs> He's like, oh, man, it's like a diamond. It's like an emerald. Being stupid. Are you gaming me? And he knows what he said. The younger, the better. But he's not Seagal, and this isn't what he meant. But he decides to keep her. I want to keep the girl. Because he knows someone that will pay top dollar. In the meantime, Seagal does what Seagal does best. Why is he always in strip club? Through murdering innocent people, he just happens to run into the Russian boss. Like randomly? He takes him hostage, and even the dog refuses to watch because he's seen this stupid shit a hundred times before. Seagal tortures him the way college kids f with the drunk guy who passed out at the party. I guess it's gonna be a long night. After drawing penises on his cheek and forehead, he draws up some coffee and squirts it up his nose. <laughs> Wait, what? He tells Seagal he'll give him whatever he wants if he'll please have some self-respect. No <laughs> fucking deal. When Seagal finally finishes satisfying his sadistic urges, he stops by the church and finds someone went crazy in there and really fucked that priest up. Seagal doesn't remember if it was him during one of his blackouts, so to cover himself either way, he just stands there confused for literally 10 seconds before- Dude, that's just brilliant acting. Okay, this guy's just a hater now. Now I'm realizing that he just doesn't understand the bold vision that Steven Seagal had when he was just fucking, uh, you know, when he chose to react to it for 10 seconds. Like this. Where mama at? That's what he's saying. We're saying the craziest shit you will ever hear. Because now I will snatch every motherfucker birthday. The pre I will snatch every motherfucker birthday. Oh my God. He's doing code switching in the movies too. He can't stop himself. Priest has no idea what the f that. Not everybody going for a ride. Where mama at? 
supposed to mean and is hoping he's not just suffering a massive concussion or died and this is hell. Now it's 12 hours later and not only has Seagal not even snatched one motherfucker birthday, I will snatch every motherfucker birthday. But he's barely moved from that spot. Since Seagal's been uh -huh. standing there, the brother was taken prisoner, <laughs> escaped by taking the hinges off a sliding door, jump kicked a cop into. F oh, wait, brother. The brother's also another one of my favorite, like, shitty action show tropes is that like the brother also suspiciously good at karate you know what i mean out of nowhere this movie is s tier in belarus bro this movie is s tier in america fire <laughs> and <flew. laughs> immediately the most flammable material this cop's jacket is made out of the most flammable material known Into to man fire. like it lightly hits the back of the fucking uh, uh, cab and catches on fire immediately. <laughs> and flew through the air like the fucking Matrix. But spending 12 hours packing this fucking bag is cool too, you lazy f So anyways, he goes to the Chinese leader in order to buy the little girl he's selling. He oh, ew, they like dressed her up too. What the rescue. fuck? because he definitely knew it was her. But it turns out- I changed my mind. He's selling her to Adam Scott instead because <laughs> he's a much bigger celebrity and that's just the kind of shit Adam Scott does. That's <laughs> when Seagal drops what the, the bombshell. I laugh for a living. No, not that. Everybody knows that. I mean the other bombshell. I'm not a man. Motherfucker. We'll talk about that later. The bombshell is that he was the one killing his men and leaving the incense. I'm Guelo. Except they weren't what? his men, they were the Russians. We're going to be out of Russians soon. So he has no idea what the f he's talking about. So it is. Seagal takes <laughs> What is that move? The uh. It is what it is, yeah. I'm gonna snatch a motherfucking birthday. What the f He's talking about. So it is. It is what it is, motherfucker. Seagal <laughs> takes advantage of all the confusion and the bad guys insisting on aiming and looking when they shoot and randomly blasts around the room, which kills the guards and Adam Scott. Still not satisfied. Oh, thank God, the knife. Thank God he, he took the ass knife out, dude. I was worried. I was like, where the fuck is the ass knife already? Emily Schmemily, they give it the five tier one gifted subs, by the he way. He chases down the production assistant and chops his fucking hand off. <laughs> then, Dr. Seagal and this guy slap each other's swords for a while. Dude, this is the best part because it, like, again, remember, there are so many incredible parts in a Steven Seagal movie. But one of the objectively best parts of a Steven Seagal movie is when you, in the rare moments, get to see him in action. And whenever he's in action, you can tell, like, you just, you can tell this guy has never moved. I don't mean, like, done hand-to-hand -hand combat. I don't mean any of that. I mean, like, just moving in general. He is so stiff. He is so out of shape. And it is fucking hilarious that he insists, like, <clears throat> he's a really bad actor regardless. But, like, somewhere along the line, someone decided he was going to be an action hero. Okay, and he had unironically 35 years to train for these roles, and he just never did. I find that to be truly inspirational. Okay, straight up. I I'm not even lying to you. I'm not even kidding. I'm not being sarcastic. I find that to be inspirational that he had literally three to four decades of action movie experience to like actually get himself in shape to just be like. I don't know, at least someone who can convince you that they're capable of walking, capable of running, capable of throwing their fucking hands around every now and then. And he just never did it. He progressively got fatter. After Seagal and this guy slap each other's swords for a while. It's down to just him and the Chinese. He just like always looks like he's on the verge of collapsing from heart disease. You know what I mean? He's like... Like, he's like, 
It looks like he's got really high blood pressure in every fucking move, in every moment that he's moving. Where mama at? Chinese boss. He shows us that they don't call him Confucius for nothing. Look at the total summation of your whole life. Is this it? Well said. Bro, he went from where mama at to like, oh my God, he has an Asian... He switched up uh, to an indiscernible, pot, like, whichever Asian country. We don't know all of them, okay? Bro, that's crazy. Bro, he quotes switches of movies, too. I did not know this. He code switched to general Asian dialect, okay? Total summation of your whole life. Oh! Why? Yeah, it's not even like it's free right now. So now he's dead and the movie ends. Why is he going out of his way to defend Chris Brown out of nowhere? Because Chris Brown has been posting on his Instagram. Actually, kind of low-key true shit about how, like, everyone picks and chooses the domestic violence. Uh, like, people who do, like, domestic abuse. Um, and he's been doing the, what about this guy? What about that guy? Like, why do you guys not cancel those people? You're constantly bringing up my fucking prior domestic abuse against Rihanna. Meanwhile, it's like, it's kind of true to a certain degree, but it's also like, well, you know, that was Rihanna. And two, it's not like you were fucking canceled. Like, like I saw him at, at a Halloween party, you know, he was, he was headlining. And, uh, you know, you never really got canceled. You just, like, don't like that people bring that up. I think. Yeah, he's just, I think he's just mad that people bring it up. And he was also a repeat offender, from what I understand. Anyway, let's continue. And Who cares? I mean, I'm not defending Steven Seagal regardless. He's... Very clearly making fun of him. Nope. Fuck you. A Seagal movie can't end without a giant middle finger to the audience. When they get back home, she tells her little sister, Sorry, but I'm banging Seagal now, so you need to get the fuck out. Smart. This scene is very important, so you never forget how terrible of a human being Steven Seagal is. <laughs> What? Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Dude, this is so awesome. 